<laughs> we don't talk about the bears here. <laughs> Just the lions. Man, we are flying through September. And man, it is amazing. I loved it that we started this core values. Um, this sermon series on core values, and we're going through our core values here at Christ Church. And as we're going through them, man, as Christians or people that say they're Christians and hopefully they're desiring, desiring to be Christ-like, these should be our core values. We should live our life in this world and bring those elements of heaven down and live like Jesus lived. And we should study it, and we should believe it, and we should call on his word for truth. I love the songs my wife picked um, at, at, for today. I know one I got to pick. And it, it's, it's great because when I talked about it last week, man, we, I can share with her and she can get it done, and we're blessed for that. But man, take him at his word. His word is truth. The only truth that you need to get through this life the right way. And we're going to have attacks and we're going to have things coming at us because Satan's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. And the world's going to push things on us. And if we can't take him at his word, we're going to get caught up. So today, as we continue on, we're in the eye, integrity. We're going to talk about integrity, which sadly, many people don't care about anymore. But we can bring it back as believers. We can hold to these core values and say, no, man, I want this word. I'm going to follow this word. No matter what it says, it's going to lift up God in praise. And we're going to shout and thank him because he gave us this so we can be better. It should be one of our top priorities as believers. If you're going to call yourself a believer, it's not just used. It shouldn't be a word we just say so we feel better about ourselves. There's a job then. It says to work hard. Now we better lock it in because this world's going to push on us more and we got to step up with this integrity. So hopefully you're learning, you're growing, you're not just listening. You're wanting to put this word in the play and say, man, I need it to change my life because I need that. And God knew we needed that, so he sent his son. He sent the word. He sent the Holy Spirit in us. This next, the first verse we're going to start in Titus, I'm going to read from the beginning. I only have chapter 2, 7, and 8 on here, but man, as I was praying, I got to start in chapter 2, verse 1, because we have to listen to what Paul is sharing to Titus. It says, as for you, Titus, Promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. So I didn't add that at first, and then I was studying more, and I was like, oh, man, if we don't add to our life wholesome teaching, then we're going to get caught up in this craziness that we see rapidly. And we're going to start listening to, to news. We're going to start listening to things people say. We're going to start doing it. But, man, he's telling Titus, when you share with these people, Promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. Teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. Could you imagine if the men... We're practicing self-control and patience and living like God and, or living like Christ and doing it. And then the women were taught and teaching younger, younger women to honor God in the way they live. What a difference it would be. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. Listen, we've done a series on that already, or, or message. It's not that you are lesser than your husband. See, God has created us, male and female, for a reason. So we can connect together to be the perfect oneness that God is in that three, that God had three in one. See, when we all become one and unified, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, husband, wife, and the kids be brought in by teaching good and wholesome, 
Now things start functioning the way God wanted. Now there's blessings that come out of it. See, in the same way, encourage young men to live wisely. And you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. Then those who oppose us will not be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. Wow, what a difference. See, if we lived our life with integrity, lined up with God's word, we'll start doing the things that God desires, not what the world desires. See, we won't be excited about crazy, evil things that are happening, and we'll be locked into living like Christ, who died, who stepped out of heaven. He was there in the beginning. Let's create them in our image. He comes down, born as a human being, as a baby, so he could go through life and show us how to live it. And then he says, it's better that I go. Because when I go, you're going to get a gift of the Holy Spirit who will live in you. It will teach you what is right and wrong. See, he will only teach you what I have taught him. See the unity? See the oneness? Why we teach our kids the right thing to do? Listen. When you and I teach truth, it's going to offend a lot of people. Why? Because people don't want truth. They want comfort. That's our nature. We avoid tough situations. God's saying, no. Titus, as you're preaching, Paul is sharing to him, you teach truth. Because if you don't teach truth, you don't really care about anyone. Because if you don't teach truth and you let them live the way they want to live and their separation for eternity from God, how much did you truly care? See, the truth will set us free. And that freedom, when lined up with integrity, then it will be welcomed by God. As you think of core values... And as we break down this acrostic Christ, and we've gone through that commitment to excellence, not perfection, but man, commit to the way God created you, you're going to live the best way you can. And you're going to be excellent for Christ, not for you. Then that heart for evangelism, that risk, man, you should want to grow enough to share it and scream it on the, the hilltops. I love Jesus. No matter what you say, I love Jesus, and I love you, and I want you to know Jesus. And now we're at I, integrity. It's so important that we live with integrity as believers because we're called to plant seeds in water. We're not called to make it grow. We're not called to make someone choose Christ. We're called to plant seeds in water. So we have to plant seeds of integrity, of truth, we can't plant any seed we want. We have to know this and love it. That's why I share every single week, read your Bible daily. Ask and seek and knock daily because you're going to need it because he wants us to be a light. He wants us to be the salt of the world. Salt is abrasive. It melts things in New York and snowy places. We use it to get rid of ice. See, it used to preserve things. He's asking us to be the preservers and the, the salt of the world teaching truth. Look at the Life Application Study Bible. A commentary says from this passage in Titus, it says, Paul urges Titus to be a good example to those around him so that others might see his good deeds and imitate him. See, when you say you're a Christian and you live it, it's still going to have pushback because the world doesn't like it. But people that are hurting, people that see your truth because it lines up with God and you're living it and saying it, now they have a connection. See, he's telling Titus, you can't say one thing and do another. I didn't accept Christ for a long time because of the Christians around me that would say one thing and do another because when they were out drinking and partying with me and then they wanted to go to church, I was like, 
but why would I want to go to church? You're doing the same thing. What difference has God done in your life? So as I started reading and studying and accepted Christ, and, and people were angry, what are you doing? Why are you following the hypocrites? I was like, I'm never going to let anyone decide what I believe in God. I'm going to dive in, and I'm going to ask and seek because he loves me just like he loves all of us. He doesn't care what we've done. He just wants us to let go of it. He wants us to live with integrity. He wants us to make sure we're studying it. Look at it says, Titus's life would give his words greater impact. See, when you live right, it gives your words greater impact because people know what you say you'll do. And if you say you believe the word of God and you're living it, they're going to see that connection. When you say you love the Lord, but then you do whatever you want to do, it's a clanging symbol or a, a, a gong that no one wants to listen to. It says, if you want someone to act a certain way, be sure to live that way yourself. Psalm 25, 21 says, may integrity and honesty protect me for I put my hope in you. Who is your hope in? Who do you trust? You tr truly trust the government? I mean, honestly, put your trust and hope in me, God says. And integrity and honesty will protect us. Because we'll be able to live the right way and we'll be comforted when people are angry at us and they say weird things and they say things that aren't true, but it sounds really good because we want to push something that is not true at all. See, when we put our hope in him, everything starts to line up with us. Again, doesn't mean it's perfect life. It's easy. It's harder. But darn it, God sent his son to die. You want it to be easy? He's wanting us to grow and mature and, be, and, and live an exampled life so people can see it. And when they're hurting, we can help them. And we sang a song. It's a narrow road. It's a narrow road. Why? Because we do not like truth. But I love it, right? It's broad with grace and mercy. So he's not expecting you to be perfect. He wants you to seek him and need that Lord and Savior he sent for you and me. See, integrity means, you got to get this. Integrity means honesty without compromise or corruption. Honesty without compromise. But it really sounds good to do this. My friends are doing it without compromise. Can you step up and say no to family and no to friends when they're choosing to live a life without integrity? And again, some people don't do it on purpose. It's when you don't follow this, your guide is wrong. It's like following a compass that does not work. Back in the day, Surrey wasn't as good as she is now. But people still followed her into weird Back ends or, or dead ends or weird things. And it's a joke because we see the things that happen. And sometimes Surrey turns us into roads that weren't there. But if we don't follow this, which is the perfect guide, the perfect thing to help us to know what's right and wrong and to live by it, and we just open up to the world, then we're compromising and see we're caught up in the corruption of the world. So integrity is one of CCFH's core values. And I believe it should be every Christian or person that claims to be a Christian's core value. Because without integrity, you have no character. Without character, you have no morals. Without morals, <laughs> we become America today. Distant from anything that looks like God desires this to be this Christian nation that we started on. See, when we desire to live with integrity, we have to be honest with ourselves. That means we have to say, I don't, I don't understand God, but your truth is the only truth I'm going to follow. I'm not going to make up my own truth. 
to make my family feel good. I'm not going to make up my own truth to make me feel good. I'm going to work my hardest. And I'm going to pray. And sometimes I might have to be on my knees longer than five seconds because I'm hurting. And I need to see how this truth really helps. See, then he fills us with this joy. And even in the hardest times, we have a joy so we can shine a light. And if you don't have that joy, I'm praying for you. Because in my 20 years almost of accepting Christ and living, I have joy. I, I love it. Every day I get up and read, I get so excited. And my life has not been perfect. Come talk to me. But man, I have joy because I know Jesus. And I am going home. When he comes back, I'm going home. If I go home before that, I'm so excited. I gain See, we're going to lose loved ones every day. I just pray that they know Jesus as their Lord and Savior because it's gain. See, when we live for Christ and integrity matters to us, it's gain when we die here because then we don't have to worry about any more corruption, any more people pushing truth that isn't truth and people wanting what they want and not caring about what is good for everyone, just caring about what's good for themselves. See, God set up everything for the best of us, to help us, to guide us, to get us home again. He has never made a mistake. Can you imagine if God says it and it's not right, how bad it is? It's a perfect God who created everything that lines it up, that has given us everything so we can live with integrity and follow him fully. Look at Psalm 111, starting in verse 7. It says, all he does is just and good. All means all that he does is just and good. And all his commandments are trustworthy. They are never or they are forever true to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. We don't make this up. We don't have to write our own game plan. We don't have to wonder and have this perfect geometry and, and calculus and get it all done. So, man, how can I live the next day? He has done it perfectly for us. If we would just let go of ourselves and die to self, pick up our cross, and live for him, now we'll have that integrity, and it won't be corrupted, and it won't be um, anything else but what God desires. See, Jesus came to fulfill that law. He came to fulfill it. So when we live in Christ who fulfilled the law, we don't have to worry about checking off a box of every single law like they struggled with in the Old Testament. No, now we have Christ who did it, and we just follow him, and we ride in his coattails, and we are excited to be the passenger, not the driver. See, who loves to drive so bad? I don't want to drive. I want to ride and say, Jesus, you show me, and I'm following Jesus came to fulfill the law that the Bible says was trustworthy and just and good. What would keep us from following something that was trustworthy, just and good? Ourselves. See, when we fight to have them changed and we think in our intelligence that we have that we think oh gosh this book is so old and how we need to change it we we need to be progressive we need to make sure it's fitting to our desires do you see the selfishness and the craziness that even sounds like when you say it as a believer but there's a whole sect of progressive christians that want everything they want, and we're going to change this because it can't be right. There's no way a God who created heaven and earth could make a book that was worth right reading every day. 
See, when we fight for them to change, we lose the honesty and integrity God has set up for us to live. When we have to challenge this, integrity goes. Character goes. Morals go. See, why does integrity matter? It's how we see if a person has character or not. See, it's a test. When you see people choosing immoral things and worldly things, man, I just pray more, please know God, because that's not even close to what God would want you to do. But they'll push it and sell it to be right on. See, when we say something, does our actions line up with what we say and what we believe? Again, I, I believe that everyone in here is a Christian. If not, this is your day. Come on down. Let's pray. Let's talk. Let's share this journey and let's start it up. But if you're Christians then, then this should matter. And this, is, this should be how you present or live every aspect of your life. That means in choices you make, in voting you do, you line it up with this. Christians don't have a party. A party for a Christian is Jesus. And we're starting to learn and grow. And we're starting to say, whoa, I have to line up my life with this. See, as believers, we're called to plant seeds and water. Some will plant seeds, some will water. But if we don't plant the right seeds, what grows? The weeds, and what do they look like? They look the same. The wheat and the terrors, they look the same. So we're letting these weeds grow up next to us. We start to understand there's only one seed to plant, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is to share that Jesus came, God in flesh, fully God and fully man. He came and lived and grew, and he died, and he rose again. That's the only seed we plant. And he has forgiven those who believe and belong to him and say, I don't want to be in charge. I don't want me to be in a rule. I want you and I surrender. Nothing made up by our own desires can be the seed we plant. Then when we water that good seed, truth grows. Not our truth, his truth. And it lacks no integrity because we're desiring to live with core values that are pleasing to Christ. Proverbs 2, 7 says, he grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. I don't know about you, in this crazy world, that God has placed me in this perfect place for right now, for me, for you, I want a shield of protection. So I'm praying for integrity so I can go out there and be shielded. It doesn't matter what arrows are being thrown at me by the world. Oh, you pastors are just this and you just don't love people and you just want this and throw them, bring them. I got a shield because I know I'm living this. And I'm going to keep shouting at the hilltops. I'm going to keep challenging people with truth. If you don't want to hear truth, this isn't the church for you. I love everyone that's here. I'm so grateful. But if you want to feel comfortable and have a cushy message, there's other churches. We're going to learn truth because the truth sets us free. And we're a family here. And we can grow. And we can start building all this stuff and this integrity. And we start living right. And we start doing right. And we start changing the culture a little bit because we start believing what we believe that God has done for us. See, this core value is important to God. And why we keep following Jesus and pointing others to him as well. Look at 1 Corinthians starting in chapter 10, and we're going to go through 11, 1 in 31. It says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That's weird. 
You mean we're supposed to do life to the glory of God? Well, that's not very fun for me. I want to do what I want to do. 32 goes, don't give offense to Jews or Gentiles or the church of God. I too try to please everyone in everything I do. I don't just do what is best for me. I do what is best for others so many may be saved. And you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. So I said this last week, please judge me. Because if I'm not living the way Christ wants me to live, I want you to tell me and then show me and then let's study together and let's walk it out. Because I want you to imitate me as I imitate Christ. Because my hope and desire is to imitate Christ. Not this world. Not to be in a, the, I want to be the, the, the pastor that everyone loves. I want to be a pastor that teaches truth and is there for you and loves you so much. I cannot tell truth. And I'm going to live the best I can. And I make mistakes. And I pray. And I ask for forgiveness. And I repent. And I go through the same struggles. My wife and I, we have arguments. We don't agree on everything. But we agree on the main thing. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So our marriage is set on him. She doesn't like football. I don't get it. <laughs> but I have to put up with it. That's why we have two TVs. But man, it's work. I'd love to tell you, I mean, we just skip around all day long. No, men and women are created differently. We think differently, we are different. If he created us in the womb different, this brain cannot think like that brain. And it doesn't want to. <laughs> We have to understand that. See, that's part of learning and having integrity that God has showed us because we are different. Jesus was honest and lived with integrity perfectly. So why do we want to change what the perfect son of God did and said so we feel better? Because when he taught truth, the people that were hurting, that were living in sin, dropped their sin and went to him. The teachers of religious law and the ones that were religious were angry and hated him. See, when you don't need Jesus, you get angry and you hate Christians. It's coming. How you care? Do you care about that? Or do you want to grow and do you want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? See, here's a quote from this resource they called God Questions. It was cool. I, I thought it was interesting. It said, in Jesus saying, go and sin no more, Jesus was not speaking of sinless perfection. He was warning against a return to sinful lifestyle choices. See, his words both extended mercy and demanded holiness. Jesus was always the perfect balance of grace and truth. See, Jesus was always, he is grace. See, he was sent so we could have something we didn't deserve, eternal life. And he's truth, though. He can't be just truth. He can't be just grace. He's grace and truth, and with that becomes love. And he's love and truth. If you love the truth, you will live for Christ. If you love people's praises, you'll live for the world. Simply, the only way to live is with integrity shown to us by Jesus, who is love. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, this is Jesus, if you love me, obey my commandments. I want that to sit in, sit in a little because, listen, we can't obey his commandments without him. See, that's why he came to fulfill the law we talked about. They already struggled through that, so they sent him. If you don't die to yourself and live for Christ, you can't love him. And his, the love for him is shown by you living like him, which is following the commandments. Do you get the connection? 
See, when we let go of us and we know we can't do it without the Holy Spirit in us and Jesus has given us that gift and we live because they're one and we start living with integrity the way Jesus lived, now he goes, man, they love me. See, they said no to the world like I did. Integrity equals living for him. Living for him equals dying to self. Dying to self equals not choosing our own way. Simple. If you have a problem and it's your way that really seems good and you go, oh man, I, I, I'm new or I'm loving this, I gotta ask God. And God's way doesn't say the same thing, then he is right. He is God. You are wrong. Always. 100% of the time. The pattern of this is what will keep us growing to be all in for Christ. See, I don't want you to just to know Christ. I want you to belong to Christ. I want you to be fully devoted followers of Christ. That's why we're going to teach truth always. And man, that truth should fill you with such joy that you can't help but share it. See, when we say one thing and we do another, we become warmer and warmer. When we come warmer and warmer, our words don't mean anything. See, we're lukewarm. I want Jesus, but not to change this. I want Jesus, but I don't want to make sure, I don't want to do that. See, integrity lines up with his truth, so we must investigate the word of God and his truth and live it, because if we seek it, we will find it. He's not hiding it. It's not like, I wonder what God wants me to do. If you ask and you seek and you knock, you're going to get it all. Then, when you get it all, you got to live it out. Then he can see, now you love me because you're obeying my commands. See, ask yourself, why do so many Christians not want to follow his truth? It's hard, that's why. It's hard, and we don't want hard. We want behaviors to be accepted, because man, if we don't accept all the behaviors people are doing, it might be family, it might be friends, it might be people we work with. If I don't accept everyone's thoughts, then I'm mean. No, it's hard. He says, it's my truth. So we don't accept behavior, we love people and we help them through their behaviors. We're there for them. We pray for them. We keep stepping up for them. But we don't ever accept their behaviors. See, when we want to wear Jesus as a patch, then we get only what we need him for that day. I want Jesus every single minute of my life. I need him all the time. I can't be all good until I need him. Wow, I've been having such a good week. I haven't read because I read Sunday. I went to church Sunday and it was good. So I didn't have to read again. When something bad starts happening, oh, wait, I'll just patch them on. God, I don't understand why I'm struggling so much. He should be what makes us breathe and what makes us act and how we live our life. See, our, our kids or spouses, or job, or house, or car ahead of God. I want God, but not if I have to lose something like that. But I want God, but not if my kids choose this style of life, and I, oh, I got to love my kid more than I can love God now. You see the danger? I got to love my job is making me so much money. I got to love that more than I love God. I got to love my house. Darn it, I need it so bad. See, God goes to second place, third place, fourth place all the time. And if we're not living with integrity by we're, because we're studying and we're praying, he just keeps dropping. And we feel it's okay. We have to have the thought that we can't do this without God. 
And we're so grateful that he sent Jesus so we can get it and we can have the strength to do this no matter what. And then that working hard is kind of exciting to us. See, because we, we start to see people's changed lives because God's transforming them when we share. And now we start getting excited for baptisms. We start getting excited for people serving. We start getting excited for a whole different thought process in people's minds. When anything is before God, our integrity is gone. And we are trying to make up what sounds good to us. He wants us to live with integrity. See, it seems harsh, but God had to send his son to die so he can cover our sins because he knew and he knows we will fall short. And if they kept falling short, how can I give them this way? I'll send my son to die. He's our strength and our portion. Thank you, Lord. Help me live with complete integrity Take away any thoughts of me leading myself. And I hope everyone says the same prayer. See, when we can do this, even when it's hard, when we can thank God, even when life gets hard, even when things happen that we don't understand, thank you, God, I don't know why, but I know you know better. Help me figure this out. And it might be, hey, good, I need you to help someone else that's going through this. See, he's always going to use us. When we have him in mind first, he's always going to turn the bad into good. He doesn't cause the bad. He's letting Satan do because he wants to see true hearts that can surrender and choose his son and do that with integrity and live for him instead of ourselves. Look at Matthew. This is real. This is from the Bible, Matthew 10, Jesus talking, and it's going to be hard but it's a reality that I want us to get. And when we understand this reality, now integrity will matter to us and we'll start living for Christ. 10, starting in verse 26, it says, but don't be afraid of those who threaten you for the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all what I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when daybreak comes. When I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. See, we should be excited to share about Jesus. When you hear it, he says, be ready to shout it. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What is the price of two sparrows, one copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. That should give you goosebumps that God loves you so much that if you acknowledge Jesus, he's going to acknowledge you. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my father in heaven. He won't forsake you. He won't leave you. If you deny him, he'll deny you. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the world. I come not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He did not come to make sure family stayed together and said, kumbaya. See, parents that are blessed with children are taught to teach them truth about Jesus. And when they do something that's not lined up with the word of God, you teach them the truth. He didn't come to make sure you just get along. He came with the sword, the truth, the word of God. To make sure that narrow road, that the people that are on it, that choose Jesus will be home and it'll be perfect. He doesn't want the wishy-washy. He doesn't want the ones that will not give or will give up their life because they want to follow what this world does. 
If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. And I skipped the verse, and I'm going to go back to it because it's important. 36 says, your enemies will be right in your own household. Anyone feel like their household is a little shaky right now? It's okay. See, that's where your enemies will be. And if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and he came and died and rose for you, now you teach it. You love your family, but you don't just let anything happen. You don't accept things that are happening. Because again, if you love your father and mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. That's real. That's truth. He's telling you, God loved you so much, he sent me to die. Nothing can come ahead of your love for God. And I didn't make sure everyone's going to choose. Everyone's got to choose their own path. We have free will, but you have to lead your life the right way with integrity so your kids can see it and you challenge them and you teach them truth and you don't okay and you care for them and you say, I love you, but that's not right. And your spouse, same thing. Why is there so much divorce? Because we don't care about the only thing that can keep two people together that are so different. Well, the Christian divorce rate is the same as the secular divorce rate because Christian is a word we like to throw out. But when we have integrity, we're going to live it out. See, that should never come into your mind, divorce, then. See, because you're going to put God first, and she's going to put God first, and you start living for God's truth only, and all of a sudden, everything else starts falling off. You're still going to argue. You're still going to agree on everything. You're still going to have fights. It's reality. Then you're going to pray and you're going to come together and you're going to say, God, my spouse can't come first. My kids can't come first. I cannot come first. See, Jesus says, if anything is first, we're not worthy of the kingdom of God. And hopefully, We are so excited because Jesus gave us the bridge back to the Father for have eternal life that we push for that in our life. See, when we give up our own lives, we stop living for our own desires and we start living his truth. See, integrity will be seen by us dying to self and picking up our cross and saying, God, you are first in all areas of my life, all James says in the book of James, if you follow all the laws but one, you're as guilty as not doing any of them. See, you can't say, I'm going to be a Christian. I want to follow this and this and this, but this, because of my family, I'm not going to challenge that truth. See, these three don't help you out any. It's all in, fully devoted followers and you just keep praying I have seven boys I'd say four don't go to church and don't care I can't bring them in I keep praying for them I keep sending them things I keep sharing a little they know they got to choose I don't lose sleep because I'm doing what I have to do God knows hey okay you've taught you show them you love them it's up to them That's just a reality. See, never feel you can't. Because of what Jesus did and the spirit living in us, we can do all things. We can step up and God can be first and integrity can matter. And we can be a light to this world and make sure this world is heading in the direction that Christ wants it to head in. See, ask yourself, why would I want to say I want Jesus and then ignore what he shows me? 
That's for you to answer for yourself. See, there's no selfishness with integrity. So when you think of integrity, humility has to be there with it. And see, then we start getting rid of worldly thoughts on marriage. We start getting rid of worldly thoughts on pro-choice. Gosh, that is just, this is just crazy. God, if you believe this, God knit them together in the mother's womb. What would give any Christian the thought that killing that baby is good? Now, that's where God is amazing because we all make mistakes. See, we've done things out of fear. I've been, I've been divorced before Christ. I'm married three times. God still calls me and called me to use me for this. He doesn't say, oh, you messed up, you're done. See, he wants us to ask him because then he wants to shower us with mercy. He gets excited to shower us with mercy. So don't beat yourself up for what you've done. Let it go. But no, don't do it no more. Don't accept it no more. Don't, don't even entertain it anymore. Gender. Really? As soon as you think there's any gender, you discredit a perfect God. Do you understand that? If God knit them together in a womb and made them male and female, and you think it's okay for them to be something else, then you just said, no matter what, God's not perfect. Because if God made this many mistakes, why would you follow him? These are just reality things that this world is going to push on you. And you're going to believe it because you don't want to offend somebody. And then that person becomes more important than God. You have to get this. This is life and death stuff. This is hell, heaven stuff. This is reality or Jesus wouldn't talk about it. Look at Luke 9, 23. This is Luke's rendition of what Jesus says again. Then he said to the crowd, if you want to be my follower... You must give up your own ways. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but are yourselves lost and destroyed? Reality. If you can't pick up your cross and die to yourself and die to every fleshly thing you want and die to the greed and die to the, the jealousy and die to the sexual immorality and die to hate and die to this, you cannot expect God to shine these lights through you. We die to self daily, it says. If we have to die to self daily, why wouldn't we read this daily? Because this fills us up with truth and light. You know why it says that people don't want to hear the truth? Because they like living in darkness. When God challenged the people, man, the light came and they didn't want to hear the light because it exposed what they were doing. See, they just wanted to sneak around and do what they wanted to do. See, light exposes things. If we all shine the light, what a difference it would be. Integrity is a core value because it will help us understand what it looks like to live in truth and fight for truth without leading our own way. Remember what integrity means. Honesty without compromise or corruption. And start thinking how I can live my life without compromising what God said and not letting anything corrupt my thought. It takes an awareness and a willingness to be new and stay true. Yes, that did rhyme. Galatians 2.20 says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. You get it? Your old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, 
but Christ lives in me, so I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. No matter what you've done, the old life is gone. You are living for Christ now. And when you live for Christ, he starts to fill us and we start to truly trust him and we understand how important it is that we die to self. Here's from the application study Bible again. It says, this happens initially when we first believe in Jesus, but we must continually deny our sinful desires and take up our cross daily. Why? Because the ruler of this world is Satan. And what will he do? Kill, steal, and destroy. So every day we get on that armor. Every day. And we're ready for those attacks. It also says our Christian lives begin when joined with him. We die to our old life and begin a new life. In our new daily life, we must resist temptation and regularly crucify sinful desires that keep us from following Jesus Christ. That's what we do every day. And man, when you lock in to him every day, every morning comes, and that's exciting for you. See, it's important that Paul emphasized, my old self has been crucified. Your old self has been crucified. Don't let it out. Pray against it. Seek him. Love him. Keep living for him. We are all new because of Jesus, the perfect example. Let's start learning and growing and living these core values out. Let's pray. Dear God, we come to you and we thank you for your love. We need help. We know it. So we seek you for that help. And I ask you to open all of our hearts and minds to get rid of the craziness, the worldliness, the, the stuff that's going on every single day. Let it go and fill us with your love so we can go out there and be lights. I thank you that you cared about us enough to send your son. Let us understand how important that is in our lives. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your son. Be with us every day in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. We